a lot of people have asked me about the training of a sheepdog. Well, over the years, um, I've had quite a bit of experience, not only with sheepdogs, but uh, with other breeds, such as greyhounds and uh, retrievers. And uh, it all boils down to one thing. To do the job properly, you've got to have patience. Uh, people come to me, you know, that are really inexperienced, haven't had a, a sheepdog before, and then, you know, ask me if I can help them to, uh, to train it up to a certain standard. And first of all, uh, I don't want it for trials, for sheepdog trials. I want it to work on the farm. Well, to be honest, this uh, training, it's all the same thing, because if you get a good trial dog, you've got a good working dog. A lot of people don't think that, but you see nine out of ten of these dogs that are running in the uh, nationals and internationals, those dogs are going out to do a good day's work as well. They have to on the hill in Scotland, Wales and in England. They're, they're, these dogs are, as I say, nine times out of ten, they're all working on the farm and doing daily work. But those dogs that do that are dogs that are properly trained. They're not just rough dogs that you hear people say, I only want a rough dog. Well, if they want a rough dog, they're a rough handler. And uh, I'm not all that interested in it. I, I like to see a dog that works properly. Um, for an instance, you driving a lot of sheep along the road, you can be, uh, you can be with the dog and he'll help you. He'll help you side by side, help to keep them going, especially with ewes and lambs. Now, if you've got a few of those ewes and one or two of those lambs straggling out on the sides and getting through perhaps into the field where they shouldn't be, that dog is going to be asked to go round right or left to put those back in. And he's got to stop when he's told. Not to go racing on in the front and bring them all back again and make them work twice as hard. Well, of course, they've, then they've got a rough dog. And those people that come to me and ask me if I can show them, well, then I do my best, and uh, for which I'm now uh, trying to help by uh, putting on this little show for you uh, on this uh, video. There are not two puppies alike. You would have to uh, find out what sort of temperament your puppy is, has got. Uh, some are listening, mostly like human beings. Some are listening to you, some are just excitable, and you've got to understand what, uh, what sort of a puppy you're dealing with right from the beginning. I'll take the puppy out, I'll take him on the lead, and we'll take him away, shut the others in, and uh, I think we'd best go outside, leave, leaving the others in. You won't want them running about all around the place, will you? So I'll just uh, put him on the lead, and we'll go out yonder. Stay, stay. Yeah, good lad. Good boy. When you get to the uh, the training in the later stages, uh, you do really want to wait until the dog is listening to you. Um, it's a great thing with uh, these uh, sensitive collies. Some of them are, are listened to you very, very early in life. Directly they can hear. You'll notice they cock their head one side and wonder what it is that you're saying. Another dog is just scatterbrained and goes around uh, head in the air and, and you know, he, he couldn't care less. But um, uh, that is one of the secrets of dog training is wait to they, uh, or puppy training should I say, uh, when they listen to you. Well, we've come down here because it's uh, fairly quiet. There isn't uh, any distractions in any way. You can uh, come down and the puppy does just know this work, but uh, the sheep are away and the other dogs are not here, so he can concentrate on what I'm trying to tell him. And first of all, he's um, a puppy that's he's coming up to six months old. 
and now is the time that he has to have a little bit of tuition in the way of obedience and to teach him that he has to have learnt to have a lead and a collar on and lead properly. Uh, you've seen that, I've walked along there with him, he walks very well on the lead and uh, I'm teaching him to lie down and to stay and the first thing to do when you're teaching a puppy to lie down, usually when they're, they are very young, uh, they, they wriggle about and they don't want to do anything but play and, and that, so you have to be a little firm with them and uh, I'll, I'll try you now and, and teach him to lie down and the, the way to do it is by putting your foot on that lead and telling them to lie down and push them down, lie down. And you keep, and the moment you lay, lay done that, get up. And then they think that they've done it themselves. Uh, you've got him here, which he thinks that he can't get up. And after a while, don't keep it too long, just let them stay there for two or three seconds. And uh, then you allow them up, for which you say, that'll do, that'll do. And you let him get up. Make a fuss of it, good boy. And he's pleased with himself. <clears throat> and he thinks he's done something wonderful by laying down when you tell him and, uh, and, and then it's, uh, it's a sort of thing that, uh, come on, stand up, you, you uh, ready for the next episode which is you walk on, so I just say to them walk on, walk on, and you do it over again by saying lay down and press them down with a foot over and the same thing applies. From then on, once you've got him lying down, the next session is to lie, uh, to stay there. After lying down, he's got to stay there. And uh, I usually walk backwards, keeping it on the line for perhaps 15, 20 yards and walk back to it. I don't uh, call the puppy to me after teaching it to lie down and stay there. I don't want it to come running up to me. I want it to stay there so I go back keeping it down all the time even if it means walking back on that line and he will know then that he's been a good dog he gets made a fuss of. Don't try doing anything else until you've got that one right. And when